everybody who is ready to talk about some beautiful lip products. Hmm. Such a fabulous line here. You guys, I mentioned this as one of my five new drugstore products worth trying, and I'm talking about the L'Oreal Color Riche Shine Formula. This is what was sent in a PR package, and yes, beautifully done. Beautifully done, L'Oreal. The individual packaging on these I think is gorgeous. These are kind of like belted in gold and then have this plastic yet somewhat crystallized looking tube here. You twist them up and I really like how the outer tube hugs the entire stick because sometimes with softer lipsticks like this, like these are very creamy, very rich, give off a ton of shine on the lips. They're like lip gloss in a tube basically. And softer stuff like that, you know how with some lipsticks you apply a little bit of pressure and then the stick starts to move and kind of lean up against the outer twister. Well here, your twister, for lack of better terminology, is already hugging that stick. So it's like supporting it and keeping it in place. So that's a really good thing. Something that I think is kind of pro and con, depending on the shade, is the fact that these aren't formed into exact like um, typical lipstick bullets that kind of come to a point or even a slightly more precise tip at the end. They're just kind of rounded and cut at that slanted angle. But guys, you are catching me in a phase of my makeup using life now where I am really getting back into glosses. I love that finish on the lips. I'm just starting to appreciate more like how much that shine does, not just for my lips and the smoothness and fullness that they can appear to have, but just my entire face. Like I feel like a shiny lip color just brings everything to life somehow. Oh, by the way, it's a very dark and stormy morning out there. You might hear some thunder in the background. I don't know why, but it always feels right to like be up here and doing my makeup or working on a video and it's stormy outside. I just love that feeling. But what I alluded to in the video where I did recommend a few of these shades was the fact that I don't feel equally good about everything in the line. There are some that I would skip over and as you hear my descriptions you'll see why and maybe you'll agree with my reasoning or maybe you won't and you'll want to try them anyway. But overall here we've got 16 shades in the line altogether, and there are half that I feel a strong yes on. And what was really interesting to me was when I got this package and I started trying everything on and sort of deciding like how I would lay them out and sort of categorize them and sort them to display them to you. They were actually already sitting in the appropriate spot, you know, and that's normally something that I go through if, if I get sent a big massive amount of lip products. The first thing that I try to do with them is categorize. It's like, okay, where are my nudes? Where are my pinks? Where are my bright shades? My dark shades? And here everything was really perfectly put together. So I'm going to go row by row and try these on for you. In our bottom four here, I'd call these the naturals. They're very neutral, they could possibly naturally occur from the lips. Very soft, neutral shades. The next row, I'm going to call those my lights. Just light soft colors. Um, you might even call them pastels. And then we've got brights in this next row. Everything there has a little more punch. And then deep rich shades, I would say, is the last section. I've got my notes. I took notes on everything. Um, a couple of things to know about everything in general. Um, buildable. Buildable, buildable. When you go over your lips with one pass, you're going to get a sheer color. If you do two passes, in my opinion, it's like perfect. Um, it doesn't create too much goop or too much weight on on the lips with that method, but it just amps up the color of every single shade here a little bit more. There's maybe one exception to that where the first pass is just everything you needed more. <laughs> all in all, a really nice formula. Very comfortable. I compared these a little bit to like Revlon lip butters. I really love the texture of those going on the lips. That really great, not too thick, not too thin feeling, but very, very moisturizing. I would say these as a whole are shinier though, like just a brilliant shine. Staying power, not going to be amazing with this texture of product. You might even find some literal lip glosses that last a little better simply because they're thicker and a little more tacky perhaps. These are very soft and smooth and creamy and shiny. There's enough thickness to make me feel hydrated and not super concerned about them sliding outside my lip line. But still, these just aren't a long wearing lip product, so they are going to wear down after you eat. You are going to definitely want to reapply if you've gone through a good chunk of your day. Now with some bold shades, I could even blot off a little color probably from this, which was from the Brights row. I could blot off a little color and I'd still 
still have some intensity left. Your lighter nudes, just because they're a softer color, they're going to appear to be the weakest in terms of staying power. But something I do like about everything here, it feels like you're treating your lips because even as color fades and the product itself just kind of wears away, I feel like I've given my lips some good hydration through this. I think that's enough about the formula now. Let's jump into the try-on. So row one, as I said, are natural colors. So the first one here is Dazzling Doe. Doe, a deer, a female deer. This shade would be the cool nude of the bunch. I'm really impressed with the fullness of color that this does have. Like I said, a couple of passes. Sometimes in the try-on it may not look like I've made two distinct passes, but like just kind of going over the same area twice. If you tend to like nudes that aren't so peachy and so warm, um, this might be something you want to check out. And while I really do like that shade, I would say the nude I like best from this collection is the next one, and this is Glossy Fawn. This has a little more golden peach in it. I love this shade. I really like it with my skin tone. And just the concept and the packaging design really works for colors like this that are natural. You don't really have to think too much about throwing them on. I would feel confident enough to put that on without a mirror. It's all kind of working for these more natural shades. Then we have Varnished Rosewood. This was another one I gave a shout out to in my five new drugstore products video. It's my lips but better. It's that mauve little bit of rosiness, but it just like perfects the look of my lips. It's like the lips I'd like to have all the time, just walking around life. This would be the color I'd like to just be built with, you know? And again, there's ease with this. The aesthetic of this whole line, that rounded kind of like, oh, I'm just throwing on a lip balm type design, works with these more low maintenance colors. The next one in that same row, which I also love, is Burnished Blush. And this is perfect spring pink here. Like if you haven't even been a big pink lip color wearer, this is the shade to dip your toe into that world with because it's not too light, not too bright. It's just like the perfect spring rose. And in this formula with this level of shine, it's just an A plus from me. I love it. So that first row, like the sector of these products that I feel probably the strongest about those natural, super wearable shades that in this format are so easy to apply. But next we're going to move on to row two. And the way I feel about these is that they're kind of milky shades. And the milkiness of them, the pastel nature of them, can kind of lend itself to a little bit of a streaky application on the lips. I tried to do my best to make my application as even as possible so you could get the best sense of the color. But just in casual, throwing it on, not paying too much attention, I don't love the look of these as well as like, for example, the first four that I showed. So here we go with Sparkling Rose, probably the um, least worst offender of these. The best of what I'm talking about from this row. It's not too light to work, but I do have to watch that shade. And if I'm being really selective about pinks, I like that burnished rose even better. Next up, Shining Peach. Very milky, very pastel. I think you've got to be very careful with this color or else it will look awfully streaky on the lips. That's just my take on it. Just calling it like I see it. And then we've got this super light pink called Dewy Petal. Thought I was going to love this just at a glance at the tube, but no, I'm running that same kind of streak risk that I've spoken about, so uh, not really feeling it, Sugar Plum. Where did that quote come from? Luke Bryan on American Idol. Glazed pink, another one of these creamy, really light pink shades, a little more intensity than the last pink. I don't hate it, guys. I'm just being kind of picky here because not everybody's gonna buy every single shade here. And again, my top pink from what I've tried is definitely that one from that first row. These, as you can see, softer, cooler pinks all around. Now we're getting into some brights, and there are a couple of these mid-tone, but yet kind of bright shades that I really, really freaking love. The first one in the row, Luminous Coral. Yes, spring in a tube. Absolutely. Give it to me, baby. I love the way this comes off. Here's why this is working. It's not too light. It's not trying to be too pastel. It's also not too dark. It's kind of right in the middle in terms of the color spectrum, and it's just perfect for this formula. Also, I'm not too worried about precision with that either, honestly. It's just kind of a sweet spot with this line, and I love that for spring. And then the shade I have been wearing throughout the video is 918 Polished 
tango and it's right on par with that coral one in terms of being not too light not too dark it's just that one's more orange this one's more pink oh it's just dazzling and then on top of it all it feels amazing on the lips but if you look at those two see what I mean how they're not so milky like some of these are they're just the exact proper intensity level for this line the next couple of shades in the brights category I would say are verging on a lip hard to control. I would have really appreciated a formed tip because these shades are so bright. We've got Lacquered Strawberry and it kind of breaks my heart because this is a gorgeous shade, but it's sort of hard to just toss it on, you know? I mean, there's a casualness to these products with the way they've been designed in the tubes. And you give me a shade that bright, it's kind of hard to apply. It truly is a gorgeous color though. And then the next one is Laminated Fuchsia and this has even more brightness, more richness, than the last shade. I think they're pretty colors, but just be careful as you apply those. If you are really drawn to those shades, just watch yourself a little bit. My last row would be the deeps, and these are shades where you've heard me say before, like sometimes with bright, really rich colors, I'll want to sometimes reach for that in a matte formula because I just know it's going to stay in place, and I'm not worried about that very pronounced color seeping outside the lips or making a mess or whatever. And then you run into situations where where the color is just so gosh darn gorgeous it's undeniable. Like, you can't turn your back on this color. It is that exact situation, my friends, with the shade Enamel Red. This is the color in the line where one pass absolutely does it. And it is such a beautiful red and the juiciness that it does have on the lips. Like, I love that. I really do love that look. I'm willing to be careful. I'm willing to check this in the mirror periodically. Like, it's just, it is that undeniable to where you kind of overlook some of your principles and your goals for lip products and you just say, nope, that's pretty. I've got to wear that. Lassie Garnet is pretty. Um, if I had to choose, I'm, I'm still loving enamel red the most. I think the thing about Glassy Garnet is that I just have a ton of colors like this in my life. I am loaded with berries, so I don't necessarily need more and more, and I'm going to be kind of selective about it. Um, next up, this shade is so unique and so beautiful. It's Gleaming Plum, and this has just that bit of purple that makes it fun and just makes it different and a little unexpected, but not so unexpected that you're scared to wear it around. But it's like another one of those situations where, yes, it's bright, yes, it's kind of bold, but I'm willing to be careful with it. I'm willing to run the risk that comes along with it because I just love the color so darn much. I feel like this is like the color of my soul. Like, I love that shade so deeply. And the last shade is so, so dark, guys. It's Splendid Blackberry, and this is so dark that it's streaky, honestly. I've got to spend too much time messing with it. You don't want to overdo it with these, like a couple of passes and then hands off, kind of, because you will start to develop a streakiness. And here, I feel like I spent so much time trying to get even color. I'm becoming my own worst enemy because I'm just layering on more and getting streaky because of texture. But here's a look at the entire swatch family here. So again, our natural shades, this is really like a great place for this line because they're easy to apply, no fuss, they look beautiful, they even out the lips, they're not sheer and streaky. In the next row, these light colors, the lightness of them can make them a little bit streaky to apply. The brights, this end of the spectrum, I think is a really awesome because they're not too dark, not too light, giving you that little fun splash of springtime color. I really like the coral shade and the tango color there. There's that undeniably beautiful red. I love this sort of purpley shade. There is a nice berry if that's something you need, but that darkest shade might give you some grief in this formula. So what do you guys think? I'd love to hear in the comments section which colors appeal to you most, um, which ones have you tried that you like the most. The natural tones in this style of product I think are really, really working just the bestest, the bestest, the best of the best. I really like to say bestest when I'm really feeling something. Here's what I cannot peg with these. The scent of them. Like, what is that? It is nowhere even remotely close to what um, standard L'Oreal Color Riche lipsticks smell like because those have like a a scent, like an iconic scent, and it's pretty strong, and you know what I'm talking about. If you, you feel me on that, th these don't smell like those. But there's something a little bit sweet trying to come through on this, and I don't know even what to compare it to because it's not vanilla. It's not like fruit stripe gum. It's not coconut. It's not like a cherry lip balm. Can I just sit here and say all the things that it's not and then eventually you and your mind will narrow it down to the proper scent that I'm trying to touch on? Ah! 
I don't know. I don't know what it smells like. <sighs> Whatever this scent is, I don't think it's strong enough to be highly annoying to anybody. Maybe something baked, something fruity that's been baked, like the lightest hint of jelly donut, just, but just the lightest bit. I'm throwing my hands up on that one. If you've tried these and you know what they smell like, please, please tell us in the comments section. We will thank you. I hope this helped you out. Thank you again for your time and I will see you very soon. Bye.